Hello, I'm Paul. I'm Adam. And I'm Ben. And welcome to the Film Busters Podcast. The film show with no filters, no prisoners taken, loads of disagreements, but one hell of a love for cinema. If you want to hear three friends ridiculing each other for an hour or so regarding their taste in films, then you have come to the right place. In each episode, one of the team picks a film for us to discuss. It could be anything from a recent cinema release to an all-time classic. So, strap in and get ready to get mad or get vindicated as we guide you through the murky world of being a film geek. If you like what you hear, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram using at FilmBustersPod. You can also find each of our individual accounts. I'm at FilmBustersPaul. I'm at FilmBustersAdam. And I'm at FilmBustersBen. If you want to use your eyes instead of your ears, you can also visit the website at filmbusterspod.co.uk. And if busting makes you feel good, you can also support us at patreon.com forward slash filmbusters for exclusive content. Or shoot over and get some groovy merchandise at society6.com forward slash filmbusters. All right, can we just get on with this now, please? Filmbusters. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Filmbusters. We are back again for this time. We're doing a special patron episode. This is not a patron episode, though, is it? It's an episode selected by a patron. That's the one. That's what I meant. Yeah. Well, you didn't say it like that. Aren't you so smart? Well, I was getting a bit confused. I thought we were doing the patron segment. Sorry about that. We've already done the patron. We did We did a pre-recording of the patron. We did do it. I thought we were episode doing it again. Today. I thought you signed me up to more bullshit. This is very alienating Sorry. to the non-patrons. They don't know what well, we're this talking is what about. Get. This is what you'll get if you sign up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no one knows what's going on. What is going on? We've got a pick from one of our Patreons, Jamie Russell. He has picked Very good way today's movie, mm-hmm. which is, for the first time in history, the same fucking director back to back. A Razorhead last episode, this episode, The Straight Story. Is this going to make David Lynch our most picked director? Most certainly. We are doing The Straight Story. It's a very different film from A Razorhead. This is the straight story in 1999. We have all never seen it before, so it's all very fresh and new experience for us. Oh, so thank you, Jamie. Thanks, thank Jamie. You very much. We actually, Paul, very kindly held off watching this last year. I mm. he was going to watch it, and I can't remember what the context was. And I said to him, "Hold off," because you wanted to see it because you didn't want me to ruin your experience of it. Yes, but not in a self, because not in a selfish way. In a, a way, little bit of a selfish way. I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's because they added it to Disney Plus or something like that. It got added. Or yes. Channel 4, maybe, at the time. 4 OD or something like that. It was added to yeah. at the time. Yeah. And it I was, was like, OD, okay, yeah. I finally want to see that. <laughs> and then you said, oh, I'm going to watch a straight story. And I was like, no, let me watch that first. But only because, as a, as a Lynch purist, it would be like if Joker came out and me rushing out to see it but the day before Paul went to. You know, if you said, let me hold off and let me watch Joker, I'd go, yeah, watch Joker, you know? Uh, but anyway, it went off my but radar. But you didn't watch it no, anyway. No. <laughs> that was about a year ago. And it took Jamie <laughs> recommending it. And even then, Paul watched it before I did. <laughs> so, But I reserved my judgment. That is the point of these episodes. But if you want to become a patron, you can get special things like suggesting the films we review. Yes. And you can go you can go become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash filmbusters. Get exclusive content, exclusive rambling from us, exclusive picks from yourselves, and you can become best friends with the likes of Jamie Russell. Nerdverts there as well. And Katie and Oti are always in the wings. Or Julio from the Contrarians. Always from the Contrarians, never just Julio. Never just Julio not. from the Contrarians. I reckon he should change his name legally to Julio, Julio from the Contrarians. Yeah. At least a middle name. Just the, yeah. from the contrarians. So they're all there and they're all influencing what we watch and what we put out to you guys. And actually, Jamie Russell has got the monopoly at the moment on influencing because mm. just today, the contrarians released their episode, which was a Jamie Russell pick, King of Comedy. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's, influenced them, he's, he's, sweeping up. he's sweeping up across the podcasting world. Yeah, he's got some good picks, that boy. Almost, if you're, if you're a podcast and you're not getting picked, doing a Jamie Russell pick this week you're not really a podcast yeah exactly I'd say so hang up your headphones and your mic because you're only a podcast if Russell's behind the scenes producing the fuck out of your show beautiful <laughs> should we move on to yes. the staple of every episode which is the wonderful quiz that we do oh yes okay if you have not listened to an episode before we do a quiz every episode I ask Adam and Ben two questions 
two questions about the straight story this time. It's not two questions about the straight story every episode, just this time. <laughs> Whatever but... film we're covering. <laughs> if they get the question right, they get a point. If they get it wrong, I get the point <laughs> so far. Ben, you're on 10. Adam, you're on 15. And I'm on 7. Yes, Paul uh, lied about his score last time and told everyone yeah. that he had many more points than he did. So he's correct Do you know himself. what it was? Do you know what it was? Because... I was on, you were on nine and I was on six and I saw them as the same number for some reason. <laughs> because you are a devilish up, one. You are a devil. You've got the upside downness <laughs> inside of your eyes. Yes. Yes, exactly. He's got the stigmata. Did you know your whole, your eyes see everything upside down and then your brain flips it over for you? I do. Yeah. Because we're all standing upside down on the earth like bats. Yes. Yeah. Well, not quite like that. It's the curvature of your eye makes everything enter your brain upside down and your brain has to flip it. So you think that you're standing up, but it's actually your toes are clinging on to the ground. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of eyes, I went to the eye uh, hospital last week. I just normal hospital, but the eye department, and they put stuff in my eyes. And I was walking down the street, and I was weeping like Dracula in the sun because it was a <laughs> blinding day. And they did not advise me to bring sunshades or sunglasses. They didn't tell me to bring anyone with me to help me, and I was struggling. I had to go from St. Thomas Hospital to Westminster Tube Station. And anyone who knows that area, you got across well, a long the bridge. bridge. And I was walking right into the sun and I was weeping. I, I was like, this is what it is like to lose a faculty. Did you almost walk into Big Ben? Do you know that the reason I'm called Ben is because I was born in St. Thomas Hospital and they didn't know what they was going to call me. And my mum's room like looked out at Big Ben and that's why I'm called Ben. Really? That is either a really good fact or you just made that up. I honestly. promise you. <laughs> that's or well that's as much as she says maybe they're lying could have been Uncle Ben's oh. rice they might have liked a lot of Uncle Ben's <laughs> rice <laughs> oh, anyway should we do your quiz Paul do you want the first question yes yes. here we go this is an easy one yeah. I believe what was the brand of Alvin Straits oh my god I was going to say it before you even said the question Paul I was going to say I was going to I was going to say I, I, thought, I was just going to randomly say, as soon as you went to go to the question, I was just going to go, bam, John Deere. I had the but answer. Then thought, oh. But then also I thought, oh, I could be the second If anyone wants to know what the answer. question was, this is like that get that, that TV show where they say the answer first. The, the question was, what was the brand of Alvin Strait's green lawnmower? And Adam said... John Deere. And that is and correct. And that is correct. You're on 16, Adam. Congratulations. You, know you should have done, Paul? You should have asked for the first lawnmower because I wouldn't have got that one. I don't know what that was. Well, I don't think it was given a name, was it? A red or a raz or a res something. I want you to be fighting for it this year. I want I want someone else to be the quiz master, and I'm kind of want it to be Adam just to see how it would be. I would like it to be, but I'm <laughs> I'm trying to actually score oh, yeah, points course. here. It would be organised <laughs> chaos. You okay. Look at the Patreon episode last week. This one's a little harder. Come on. This is this is how much you're paying attention to the film. I have a feeling I know what this question is going to be, and I made a mental note of the answer while watching the film, and I have forgotten it. And if it is this question, I'll be pissed. <laughs> and I bet it's going to be. It's a bit of a dark one. Oh, okay, it's not it... then. Okay. Alvin's wife delivered 14 babies, but how many of them survived? Seven. Seven. Adam got there first. No, no, I don't think he did. <laughs> he did. He did. He did on mine. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, Ben. I'm, going I'm back sorry. To sleep now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How is Adam scoring all these points, man? He wants it. He hasn't year. done he anything it. for years. He just even when there was questions about the shining in Kubrick, he wasn't able to give an answer. And this year he's pulling it out, pulling that. them all out. Yes. I'm very I'm very glad that you both actually remembered that. Well done. Yeah, we both paid attention. See, I had the answers to both of them. It's just Adam got mm. there first. Mm. Well done. So it finishes on Ben on ten, Adam on seventeen. And me on seven. Ten oh away from God, me, seven away from Ben. It's bad. Adam could actually disappear for a month's worth of episodes <laughs> and we wouldn't catch him. <laughs> Especially not if I if I keep getting the answers wrong because it would only be you scoring points, so you're ten points behind. You're Sad five times. episodes worth of questions behind. You would have got the two of them this week, though. I would. Oh, yes, I would have. If it weren't for well, your very sharp tongue. Well done, Adam. I, I look forward to you being the quiz host. I'm going to bottle it because I like answering questions. <laughs> and well, I guess about true. October time and then just going to get no points. And yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, let me just forget it now because I don't want to be the quiz master. <laughs> Adam has no staying power. No staying power. So he definitely will f fluff it. I prefer ask answering questions. It's no fun asking them. 
uh, it is no fun asking them because everyone just challenges the questions you ask and they say oh this this isn't right and that answer's not right and this and <laughs> what, that what the colour of harlequin's hair yeah. and that type of stuff <laughs> never let that one go <laughs> and then take to twitter to get support <laughs> you took to twitter yeah I know but they supported you <laughs> <laughs> idiots man well well Anyway. anyway, shall we move on to the main event? Yeah. Yes. Let's talk about straight story. Let's return to David. Well, you don't think about getting old when you're young. You shouldn't. There must be something good about getting old. Well, I can't imagine anything good about being blind and lame at the same time, but still at my age, I've seen about all that life has to dish out. I know to separate the wheat from the chaff and let the small stuff fall away. So, uh, what's the worst part about being old, Alvin? Well, the worst part of being old is remembering when you was young. Okay, everyone, today we are doing the straight story from 1999. This is the David Lynch film. It will be a spoiler episode, no hanging about. We will do spoilers straight away. David Lynch production. So if you have not seen it, we will spoil it for you. But first of all, Adam, would you like to do a very, very nice plot summary? I will do. And as far as Lynch films go, this is probably the easiest to do a plot summary of. I'd say so. It's about a man who gets on his tractor and he drives across a couple of states because he doesn't have a driving license, he doesn't have a car, it's the only way he can do it and he goes to see his brother who he hasn't seen in 10 years and his brother's had a stroke and he needs to go see him to become friends with him before he dies. To become friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> to rekindle their love of family. That's true. That's probably the the um, easiest Lynch film to summarise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shall I give you some facts and figures? Yeah. Tell us. It's, it's 1999. Let's consult my... Dad. Ah, well, now you, fr- you, you jumped the gun, boy. I've... I've <laughs> Especially... I've got something else written here. You want to it hear it? It was actually released in 1998. <laughs> this is actually what I've written for, the, for, for your context. Go on. In 1994, mm. some major things happened in America. Kurt Cobain died. Mm. The O.J. Simpson trial played out. Mm. And a 73-year-old man named Alvin Strait drove a John Deere, and I've written it, a John Deere lawnmower <laughs> from Iowa to Wisconsin to visit his 80-year-old brother, Henry, who had suffered a stroke. Little did the world know that five years later, David Lynch, fresh off the back of such dark and nightmarish hits as Twin Peaks and Blue Velvet, would bring this true story to screen. Not only that, that it would go to play out at Cannes and Walt Disney Studios would pick up the rights to a David Lynch production. A David Lynch production that David Lynch says is his most experimental movie of all time. I saw that. That made me laugh. We come back to that stuff, right? (laughs) So the film was shot entirely in chronological order along the entire route that Alvin took in real life on the journey to see his brother just so that they could try and capture the essence of of the, the, the whole spiritual journey that he went on. The cast includes Sissy Spacek and Harry Dean Stanton, but it is Richard Farnsworth who steals the screen time. Although he was not a widely known well actor, his performance was enough to earn him a Best Actor nomination at the 1999 Academy Awards. He did not win it. Do you boys know who did win it in 1999? Did I read this? Um, I can't remember. Uh, uh, Nicolas Cage. Tom Hanks. No, it was Kevin Spacey for American Beauty. That's aged well. I know, right? Um... (laughs) And yeah, Richard Farnsworth had to be convinced to act in the film because even though he really wanted to to be in it, he had seen David Lynch's previous stuff and he thought Blue Velvet was very rude and very very crass. And David Lynch had to reassure him that this film was going to be nothing like that. Um, And did you know that Richard Farnsworth, the actor himself, was actually struggling? Well, you do. Paul is nodding. He was terminally ill with bone cancer at the time, and he really couldn't walk for real. So he was particularly identifying with this character. And the whole thing has a very bittersweet ending because a year after the film came out, because he couldn't deal with the pain anymore, he killed himself with his shotgun. That is very sad. 
And on that bright note, <laughs> let's, um, yeah. <laughs> so who's going with the reviews first? Well, it is Adam's choice, as always. I'm going to hear from Paul, then Ben, then me. I mean, I did okay. the other way around last week, so we'll do it this way around this week. All right, so. As you, as you mentioned, Ben, for starters, my biggest surprise from this film was the fact that it was a Disney film, which kind of, in a way, set like a precedent for what I was getting myself into. But, but like seeing, seeing the, the film in the vein of a Lynch film, mm. there are certain moments that feel very, very Lynch-like, especially like in its, in its first act, the characters are very like outlandish and hyped up at times. Like you can tell like this, it feels all very like, very Twin Peaks, a little wacky. But other than that, it just all feels very Disney, right? It is, a, it is a film I felt like slipped through the net of a straight-to-video straight to TV movie, in a way. Is he going to come because damning? It's, He's going to come damning with the review. Well, it's like, even like down to his editing and, and the way like the scenes are cut together, like the transitioning and the music as well, the score in some way, and that, although that kind of does feel a little bit Twin Peaks as well, like the Twin Peaks show, <laughs> I kind of felt like. Yeah, it did. Um, at the beginning, it did. Yeah, it's it's very sweet, wholesome. Uh, it's uh, inoffensive, and and something I can imagine that you would just like happen to catch playing on a Sunday afternoon with your family on TV, and just be like, oh. Then this is what, and then you're just in too deep. <laughs> it's like we've got to let this end now because we're we're just in too deep this film. I did enjoy it. It was a good movie, uh, but it's I don't think it's no more or no less than a good movie. It's a seven out of ten. Interesting, eh? Yeah. You're very you're panning it quite a bit there. I thought. No. That's my review. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> well, you were you you went to the jugular a little bit on this sweet little innocent well, thing. I, I think it felt very much like if you if you went on Disney right Disney Plus right now, and you just scanned through some like family dramas. Yeah, you could right? find it there. Yeah, you'd find it there, but you'd also find a load of films that are just like it. Well, uh, okay. So anyway, well, uh, let's talk. About disregard that. everything that he just said. So basically. <laughs> You can't. It's hard for me to review this film without talking about Lynch generally, because I love his stuff so much. He's like my go-to director. I admire pretty much everything that he's put out there. So I, before we watch this, Jenny was like, "Try and put from your mind that this is David Lynch, and we'll just view it on its own merits." And I was like, "Okay, but." There was never. It was never going to happen, was it? From the opening minutes, when it says a Walt Disney production, a David Lynch film, it's like fucking hell. Two juxtapositions there. How's it going to play out? And what I liked about this was the fact that it is completely disarms you when you go in knowing it's a David Lynch film, knowing what he does. You're waiting in every scene for something to go horribly wrong, for him to turn a corner or for the camera to slowly reveal something and it never happens you you just get this wholesome good vibe throughout despite the nasty circumstances of a man who's getting towards the end of his life traveling to see his brother who is potentially not going to be there when he gets there and yes it's very folksy and 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 very twee and very cute and 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 all of that but it worked because I don't think there are stories out there for older people. And it acts as a great response to, like, ageism. We have lots of, of progressive films, but there are not many that show an older person's perspective on the world. And that show that they have worth and that they have value. And this did. And... Although I didn't cry, that I felt emotional multiple times throughout the film. Not just because he was going through such a extreme situation, but the little exchanges he had, the stories he told, the looks look he had in his eye when he was in certain situations. It was like uh, the whole life experience was captured in him. It wasn't just his own personal journey to see his brother. It was like it was like his final journey 
and the entire journey was reflective of his life to date. And I like, I, I, I liked it. I, I liked that it that it had that sort of love and sympathy and positive energy for someone who's in the twilight years. That said, I didn't think it was incredible. Uh, it didn't completely blow me away. I wasn't like, oh, wow, David Lynch has nailed it with this. I do prefer Lynch's surreal, um, more arty stuff. Uh and if this wasn't a David Lynch film, I probably would never have seen it unless Jamie had recommended it. But if, if Jamie hadn't recommended this and this wasn't a David Lynch film, I probably would never have sought it out. Maybe I'm rating it slightly higher because it is a Lynch film. I don't think so. No, I'm not. I'm not because I felt the way that I felt. It's an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I'll go with that. We'll go to yeah. war in the main episode. We go I'm to only war. One, I'm only one rating down than you. <laughs> well, you are. We'll see what Adam has to say. Very true. Okay, I'm going to put it out there. I agree with one of you. Okay. Paul. One of you score-wise. Um, Paul. Well, you'd say don't Adam. Just, just, just shut up. I mean, you'd say Adam? <laughs> you'd say Adam. Um, yeah, I, I I, very much enjoyed this film. You better pick it up then. <laughs> I did. I um, And do you know what this film is? It doesn't do anything but it is so simple and so enjoyable while doing nothing. And that is what makes this film so effective at the same time as well. And that's the beauty behind it. It's almost like a lot of people could try and make this film, but they wouldn't make it as wholesome and as heartfelt as it actually was. And like, you can't, I mean, obviously you're going to care a lot for the old man because it's an inspiring story, but they did nothing amazing. Like the performances weren't amazing, let us say. They were all very good, but they weren't like stand out. Nothing will stand out about it, but the whole film just works together. And I very much enjoyed it. I had a wonderful time watching it and it warmed your heart. And um, for that reason, it's an eight out of 10 for me. Oh, it is an eight. Okay, I thought you were going to go seven. I knew I was right. I <laughs> disagree with what you said though, Adam. I think his performance is fucking stand yeah, but, out. But it's a stand out in a non stand out way though. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. Very natural. It's not very. Yeah, it's just natural, but it does. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Very natural, very believable. It always looked like he had tears in his eyes, even yeah. though I think it was just like old man eyes. You know, old, old yeah. men just mm. get those watery, watery eyes. eyes. You like, walking back from like, hospital. He looked. Very, yeah, he looked very emotional the whole <laughs> way through, uh, and I his his way of like when he was talking, like his eyes were sort of like darting around and his face was slightly twitching it was like he was living everything he was living his memories he was living in the moment he was really feeling everything yeah, yeah and yeah his performance was strong i don't think if it had been someone else who was less charismatic that the film would have held up as well as it did because it is very slow and it kind of weighs down on how much you're willing to spend time with this old man hmm. but it's so definitely it's just so simple the film it's just so they don't do anything. You're literally just watching a man drive a, a lawnmower across America, and you just meet some weird people along the way. That's the thing, and it doesn't really, it doesn't really like stay with with the moments for no, too it long. It like cuts away. Yeah. Before it's it, before you like it never outstays its welcome with any scene. No. It just starts like a he just like you see a cut to his face and it just fade and then just be on the road again. Yes. And also the people we meet, just he carries just, on. Just, just, he's just moving on. He's just getting where he needs to go and just. Him but you know that's life. life. Yeah, that's life. That we have mm. many people that come and go in our life, and while we're with them, we think, "Well, this is who I'm with now." But yeah. then you move on on that journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some you might see again. Most you'll probably never see again. And that's kind of what I, I I don't know. There was it is a very simple story, but there's like it feels super metaphorical. It's it's at a the same beautiful time. story, and that's why it just I you can't I can't dislike it. I just I couldn't dislike it either. Yeah. I just that's what I think that's what it was. It's it's about getting wrapped up. I mean, I did I I got involved with the story. I didn't get wrapped up in it so much that I was like, oh my god, this is like really blowing me away right now. I just, I think it was the simplicity of it mm. that kind of held it back for me as being anything more. But the, for me, the simplicity is what makes it so beautiful as well. Yes, I liked it. I like the it's simplicity. It's just like, this is what it's doing. It's doing nothing spectacular. It's just telling you a story and you're just watching this man. It's not trying to engross you with anything else other than just this story. That's all it did. 
which is why it felt like this this like true like if you go to the true life story movie channel mm. or something also, that this is something that'd be playing on this there. is sorry this is what i mean about his performance it's like he wasn't an over charismatic person he didn't have uh he had a personality that you warmed to, but not a personality that would take over a room, and not mm, a personality yes, you know, right. necessarily watch for two hours. And nobody he met along the way was like that as well. He, right. like, those people we stayed with, none of them were like exceptional personalities. They were all just run very. Everyone was a kind of run of the mill, normal person, and everything about the film was run of the mill. But all of it together makes it quite beautiful. It does have these odd moments though, like the the woman who hits crashes into the deers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's peppered on? with stuff like, it, even though it's like <laughs> definitely the least David Lynch of all his films, it's very much a David Lynch film still with stuff like that. Like that's yeah. fucking. She's like so over the top with it. But and you it, know it that's of, true. It's jarring. That's true. It's a little jarring. That happened on his journey. He encountered a woman who said that she had knocked down thirteen deer in the last whatever, however many weeks it was. Mm. I guess life is full of these. Life is full of these random things. Events. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it just generally, even though it's simple, it completely makes sense that David Lynch would direct this because if you hear, uh, the plot is an old man drives a lawnmower across a couple of states to see his dying brother. Who's going to direct that? David Lynch. Well, of course it he is. It kind of sounds exactly like that kind of film he would direct. Yeah. Even though, even though on the, after watching it, you feel like, is, will that really be a David Lynch film? But just hearing a plot synopsis of a man who drives a lawnmower across, yeah. it's like, that's David Lynch. <laughs> um, it had all these inflection. It had all the things that he likes to do still because there were very ominous sounds throughout, which is almost oh, yeah. like... Especially the beginning bit. Yes. I was like, what is going when on the right camera, now when it's panning into the window? Yes. All the steam and stuff yeah. like that, wasn't it? That's why I was like, how is this rated you? Because already I feel dread. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then it's just this man on the floor and it's like... Can you help me up? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, this is Twin Peaks right now. <laughs> yeah, it had, it mixed, it definitely had all those sort of like charming elements of Twin Peaks, the cutesy small town attitude approach, but with none of the dark, none, none of the darkness at all. I think. Very simplistic people. Yeah, but also like just people. Especially just in the people. town, in his town, in his town is very simplistic people. Like the old man who's very odd, who works behind the, Behind the counter in the shop, <laughs> he's just like, "Oh, oh, oh. that's it's my like, grabber." It's the way he acts, <laughs> it's who my grabber when he's like, "That's my grabber." Oh yes, and he's getting all worried, like, "Oh, yeah. I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> I know, but uh, yeah, exactly. I guess I have two grabbers. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to open like Star Wars film for a minute. Then the the, the credits were <laughs> very much like David Lynch was auditioning for Star Wars. <laughs> Jenny was like, why do they keep cutting to these sh- like poorly displayed shots of the sky? Because <laughs> they were, it didn't look good. It didn't. But like, I don't know, maybe in late 90s that was good. I don't know. It was not it was. convincing as a night sky. Are you talking about the stars? Yeah. Because it's because it's all about him wanting to look at the stars. I know, but the visual was not a good visual. Like David Lynch no. could have got a better visual of stars in the sky. He could have rang up yeah. George Lucas. Yes. It was, and, and as, as the ending came, where they're looking at the stars, mm. it is like going into hyperdrive on the, in Star Trek or something, because the stars are like moving, coming in. towards you. <laughs> um, he has a, a thing about, well, not to try and connect this to a Razorhead already, but even before watching that film yesterday, I was reminded of the fact that in Razorhead, it starts with the guy's head floating sideways in space, and then... Mm. I remembered that in Twin Peaks, The Return, Major Briggs' head is seen floating in space, sideways. Is that when he, he goes missing or something, doesn't he? Yeah, but he's yeah. not in Twin Peaks, The Return. But his head is. His head oh, floats right, yeah. into it. And then when the, and I'd literally been saying that to Jenny while we we're having dinner. And then 20 minutes later, we watched the film and it opened up with stars. And it's like, fuck it. We were in the Lynch world. This is all <laughs> part of, of his rich tapestry. I think the, the key thing is he didn't write this himself. So he was yeah. working with someone else's script. So it's like, okay, I, he heard the true story. He's like, wow, he read the script. And he's like, okay, I've got to do this. And I think that was it because he had the constraints. Someone else's script and I'll direct it. Okay. That's why we've that's got what, something that follows a more traditional path. Yeah. And that's why it's his most experimental because it's nothing like exactly. what he'd ever do. Exactly. For yeah. him, it's his most experimental. Yeah. yeah. 
because yeah. he has to act within the constraints. Stray away from what your what your normal constraints are, kind of thing. But <laughs> it's to his credit because it it feels it feels smooth. It doesn't feel like an artist compromising. It f- it feels like that's the film he wanted to tell. Hmm. Yeah. Like maybe he would have had it no dialogue all the way through, but like it's still, you know, the scenes are all very slow, and it takes you it takes a while for you to find your footing with it. And I find this with almost every film nowadays. The first 20 minutes or so, you kind of... That's where you're still testing the water of the pacing of it, where you're getting the measure Mm. of the acting, the pace, like what sort of film am I actually in in the zone for? Um, And it was going very slow. But then it's almost like that story has to be because he's traveling Mm. fucking slowly across America. Makes sense. You need to slow down, go on this journey of reflection because... It was like Mr. Bean's Holiday. It's nothing like Mr. Bean's holiday, but if, if you want, if you want to say that, you can. It's just like an exactly old man like pottering around, just trying to get from A to B with no vehicle. He's not that old, Mr. Bean. Nah, I know. Is he? You know what I mean? He's, He's like, only about four years older than I am now, Adam. Uh, Mr. Bean's holiday. He was probably in his fifties or sixties, wasn't he? I don't know how Rowan Al- 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 Atkinson is. Rowan Atkinson. The thing of it is, is that. It is a straight, simple story. You, there's not, unlike past episodes, we're not able to delve deep and, and say, oh, this is what this meant and that. What you see is what you get, but what you saw and what you got was beautiful. It was very, very good. It worked because it didn't need another layer. So do you know at the very end, when he breaks down the last time and that guy in the tractor comes along? Yeah. I was just like, oh, these, look at these old men. They're just going around helping each other out. Isn't this cute? And then I was like, those two look alike. Are they going to be, is that his brother on the tractor? I did think that as well. And he's just, and he didn't recognize and then where they were looking over each other's shoulder at each other, I thought, oh, now this is it. Like, that yeah. was his brother. I did think that would be a good moment if his brother just pulls up on a massive tractor. <laughs> 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 Alas, you get Harry Dean Stanton instead. Yes. And that was nice to see him. Yeah, but it was also was nice, like, of course that, it's it was him. nice that the film just ended when they met. They didn't, you don't need to know anymore. You don't need to know how. Like, they got along, like, was it worth it or anything like that? It just ended so when you got there. did either of you cry? No. I did not. I felt emotional. No. I didn't cry, though. Felt emotional, yeah, exactly. I didn't have tears, but I, I felt emotional. Like, when he... Because when his brother just looks at the tractor, and even before he says, did you drive all this way to see me? Not tractor, lawnmower. Mm. Even before he says that, he ha- he's like, you see his face is filled with emotion because he understands what his brother's just done. Hmm. It's a sentiment, isn't it? And he's just like, yes, I did, Lyle. And it's like, oh, shit. If you get that, it gets you in the feels. Gets you in it's the like, feels. It's you like, don't, you don't even need no apologies. You've, do, you've just done it right there. Yeah. And apparently in the true story, after that, his brother went and, and moved to his hometown with him. Came back to his okay. hometown with him. So they really did patch things up and came mm. back home, which is nice. Um, and apparently he, di- he died, five, was it five years after that? I think it said he died. Yes. So he would have. So if the, if that's correct, then when the film came out, he would have died. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah, it would have been nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Maybe he would have been mm. involved in some of the production or something. I don't know. Probably not. Mm. But yeah, he he would have. Then wouldn't have seen it. Um, do you do you get where I'm going with when I'm saying it's like a TV movie? Yeah, I do. I, it's I do simple get editing it. again. It doesn't need to do anything. That's fancy. what I mean. It doesn't. It doesn't mean it's not damning it. I do get it. It's just, it, yeah. that's the feel. If I saw that in full on TV, though, on Channel 5, I'd be like, mm. fucking hell, they actually put on, Channel 5 put on a really good movie for once. I wouldn't be going, yeah, that's just like any. But before, but, okay, say say that it, you didn't know it was David Lynch mm. and it, it's just playing on the TV. Yeah. Would you be like, I'm watching this film? Entirely, I reckon, you know, yes. I reckon it would engross me so much. Like, you forget that it's David Lynch, especially for someone like me. I didn't, it like, depends you forget where you clock into it. I would, I would, I would immediately say yes. This is definitely a straight to, t- not straight to DVD, TV movie. Straight to DVD sounds bad. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. I, I get what you mean. But that's it's because of the pace. But what it is, mate, is lifetime. It's like a lifetime. Yeah, movie, but again, it comes down to this thing of films just aren't really made about older people from older people's point of view. Like mm. the people who make the films are fucking old. The people who have influence in the film industry are old and dinosaurs almost. But the people that like head up the stories that the camera focuses on mm. rarely do we have good ones of older people that aren't fucking Clint Eastwood getting his gun out for revenge just tell just tell yeah. a story about older people that we can relate to because yeah, the whole way stories. through I'm you know 
there's like this sense of like melancholy about my own life and mortality and it's like I'm living I'm living my youth now I'm still a young man one day I'm not going to be and and that day is going to feel like tomorrow slash yesterday when it gets here um so you've got to just appreciate the journey that you're on mm-hmm. and know that there'll come a point where you you look back and you will encounter all these people along the way that's what I, d- I did appreciate the the amount of like starring roles in that in the film are all older people and anyone who is young they don't really focus on or it's made out to be an idiot like the two twin Mm, yeah. Twin uh, mechanics. Yes, you're right. That was cute when he and was speaking like, to them, though. When he was talking to them about how much it means to be a brother. Those two are two Twin Peaks characters. Yeah, <laughs> right there. No, they are with that fucking plaster, that with plaster with a, a bolt underneath it. Yeah, very. Yes. David Lynch. I was like, what is that? Yes, it looked like a worm or something. Yeah, do you reckon he was, was like filming production one day and, and he saw them two and he goes, oh, "I've got to do something with these people. I can't do a lot in this film. I've just got to do something with these." Well, them two are the Farley <laughs> brothers. You know, Chris Farley. That comedian from the nineties oh, who died. He was yes. meant to be in it, but then and then he died. So I, I don't know whether it would have been the Farley twins they, or triplets or what. I was what. thinking they both look familiar. Yeah. And yes, they look exactly like him as well. Yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, you're right. Like all the younger people are either not stupid, but they're like people to be taught lessons yeah. to. Like the younger girl who's run away from home and is and is pregnant, teach a lesson about family and the importance of sticking together those two it's like don't try and con an old an older person like i may be old but i'm still gonna talk you down from that quote that you gave me Mm. what did you think about um why did you think when he turned up to that family and they were like oh you can stay on our yard for a bit when he wanted to use their phone and they were like come inside and he was like no no, i'll do it out here and he was like it's all right we'll leave the room and he's like no no i'll do it out here why do you think that was that that is something that I was thinking that as well because I can get what he that he wanted to do the journey himself because he it was like a pilgrimage yes. that he needed to do this to kind of prove something to himself. But I was thinking that as well. I was like, why doesn't he want to go into the house? It's a bit odd. I could only think it was because on that journey, his home could only be that that trailer behind him, and if he went into a house, that was almost like cheating. He had to yeah he had to yeah go he's, on, he's taken shelter do it himself yeah. He's like, I can stay on your land and have some of your water and whatnot, but I've got to be out here. That's why he like pays for the phone call because it's like, I'm not having it as charity. I'll pay for that phone call that I just made. But that's a bit odd though, <laughs> because <laughs> he go into the pub and buy beer. If he's paying, yeah, for but it. that's because he's paying residence. his money for a service. Yeah, but a pub also isn't a home. Yeah, and by going in there, it's like the home that he's been carrying across America all that time he's like basically going well i'll go in go into this house and have some comfort for the call so i I need Mm. to be outside at one like there was something beautiful about it like the man was all broken down the doctors are saying right we got to do this test that test you can't do anything and then he's like fuck it i'm gonna do this massive mission outside in pouring rain conditions if the thing breaks down i'll pay to get it fixed or get a new one i'll buy a new one from ed from twin peaks yes (laughs) <laughs> do you see it as almost like uh this is his the way he comes to terms with like his life and this is his punishment that he has to get through this and then he'll be fine so if he has any help along the way it's like someone someone's giving him a leg up no i don't think it was a punishment i think it was like you want to prove it's a challenge he set himself it's my yeah and and it's like ultimately he's making the journey to apologise after this 10-year rift. So it's like... That's it's what I mean. Like, it's almost like a punishment for his thing. This is a, like to rectify what he... I think it's him just trying through. to prove it more than anything. Yeah, I think he, he needed to prove that he could still do it despite being old. He was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mend bridges and I'm going to go on this journey. It ain't going to be easy. But he enjoyed it. I got the impression he was enjoying that journey. I don't get the impression yeah. he was like, oh, I've just got to get through this. And I actually thought we were not going to see him reunite with his brother and, it, and then the whole thing was going to be, it's about the journey, not the destination. But I'm so glad mm. we saw what happened at the destination. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, it's life. The whole fucking journey is just life, mate. Like you go out, you're on your own ultimately. Yes, you have people around you. You have loved ones. But 
you still need to do things by yourself. There's certain things only you can do, and your journey through life is your journey. I think, do you know what? How I, why I feel I think it's like a a lifetime story is because this all these things that happened to him. You're trying to make this point happen, aren't you? No, 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 no. This is me just. Paul's been a watching a lot of Lifetime movies. He's got he's got a frame of reference for it. I don't watch Lifetime movies. <laughs> Listen to my point. Listen to my point. So, the way that this story has been told feels very much like they're just recounting everything, all the different things that happened to him on his journey. Where in a normal narrative story, everything kind of would tie in. Yeah. To the message. Mm. Whereas this feels like this is just life happening and this is just random events that are happening. It's not like like in a normal film, the person who hits the deer would tie in somehow. The the people riding past on the bike on all the bikes would mean something. But it's all very much just like, oh yeah, when I was on my journey, I saw loads of people ride past on the bike. Oh, and I saw this person crash into a deer. And it's just like, this is just it playing out on the screen. Yeah, but you wouldn't get that in a Lifetime movie. I think you would. Okay, so then I think the difference is you would get it in a Lifetime movie be, uh, because they throw in something without even thinking about it. It's like, oh, there's some bikes nearby today. Let's just have them cycle past. But that shot with all the cyclists flying by, like, there was something beautiful about it because it's like, here he is solitary on it his journey. It showed you the speed he was going as well. But I, And me. then also, like, here's all these other people on this other journey traveling in another way en masse. Everyone is moving and journeying in their own way. Here's all of these people, but ultimately he gets to the same destination as them. And then they, like, all applaud him when he gets in. And then they, like, have conversations. There, there was something up, uplifting, some wholesome spirit about it. Everyone's traveling and everyone's journeying. Jenny said it last night. It's like when you're going, it's like when you travel alone. And you encounter people, Adam, you'll know, you, you've done it. I've never done it. Jenny's done it. And you encounter people when you're away that you know you're just going to encounter briefly. But they add a little something to your journey. It's like that, those encounters. Some good, some bad, some random, some bizarre. You meet people for a night and whatever you were doing at the time because your paths are crossed and then that's it. You know it's going to be like, that's it and you move on. And it's just I, the whole random encounter thing is part of the beauty of it because in those moments is where life is happening that's life that's character we're seeing glimpses of the human experience and I, and I think yeah I love I think that stuff's beautiful I think I know Jamie said this in his review but I thought it before I saw his review but it's just because <laughs> it's true this is true the, the Harry Dean Stanton film Lucky yeah. is a companion film to this. Yeah, I, I did get the same. He's got a similar feel to it. Very similar. I actually prefer Lucky. But um, again, it's it's just the hu the human experience. And the whole that whole film is based on Harry Dean Stanton, uh, the bar that he goes to and some of the locals. And it's just little conversations. There's no plot there's no oh we've had this conversation so that means this is going to happen now he's interacting with people and we're getting we're feeling something just from those conversations and those those experiences and i think the commonality between the two films is it's both about an older person who's lived a a, a rich and full life of good and bad things and uh, reflecting on all of that and reflecting on that journey that's why i really want to watch bloody nose and empty pockets as well because it just you're capturing mm. in real life okay yeah, there is some similarities in that, actually. But Paul wanted for the deer to mean something. And, for and he wanted it to, to be on Channel something. 5 at 5pm. I didn't as need it to mean something. I didn't mean it. I was just saying mm. that this is why I feel like it feels like that kind of movie. Well, I don't watch Lifetime movies, so I don't know. Well, you. so I'm correct then. <laughs> <You're>, no. <laughs> You're incorrect just for watching the Lifetime movies. And I, I've, It's very nice. It's a very wholesome. It's a very nice watch. I feel like you are you are being very... You are damning with your praise. I'm not You're damning saying that it. like, oh, it's just very nice, very wholesome. <laughs> it is. Are, it's like, it was a good film. You are damning it. You're saying, it was very sweet, but that's easy to do. It was a good film. Easy to do sweet. It is very easy to do it sweet. It is sweet, but it's not easy to do sweet <laughs> as nice and as meaningful as this. 
Sweet as it's nice. not easy to do sweet when you know that they, what, that it's David Lynch and what he normally does. This film, it feels like somebody's made you a spaghetti bolognese, but they've only just put like tomato and mince in it. O- only Adam. No, listen. See, this is damn. Oh, no, shush, shush. Let me finish it, you tit. It is. If you're not going to let me finish it, you can't just shoot me down. They've only put carrot and tomato in their bolognese, so it's not even a bolognese, mate. Well, they've only what put mince that? and It's a shit in. salad. They haven't, they haven't added all the extra flavours. They haven't added all the extra little bit, but it's just a really, really good bolognese, and it does the trick. And it's really nice, and it, you're happy, and it's, it's not a bolognese. That's damning. <laughs> and it makes and it makes your heart warm. And you, it fills you up, and you're still Listen. happy because you're just there. Good lord, don't ever go to Adams for dinner. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm making a nice I know, bolognese. I know what you mean. It's, it's that was a real nice bolognese of a film. Mm. Well, here, Sometimes what you, when you get a margarita, and it's the best pizza on the menu. Yeah, that's what you should have said. You should have said, "That's what you should have said." Just the simplest one. That doesn't have to have yeah. loads of other ingredients on it. Just, but but just, it doesn't mean it's the best pizza on the menu. I'm sorry. No, but it could be the tastiest. It serves you the best at that time. It makes you the happiest. Because it's just yeah. so simple. It's so perfect. The cheese is just crisped nicely. Well, listen. All I wanted was the stuffed crust. Oh, you get stuffed crust. Yeah. You're American. See? That's the stuffed crust is the Michael Bay of pizzas. He wants the stuffed, stuffed crust, crust, but no nah. meat on it. Nah, I think I think anyone who puts like spicy meatballs on on the on the pizza that's the Michael Bay. Oh no, it's right. not. They want the bang in the mouth. That's flavour. A, a stuff. That's the bang a in the mouth. Crust is a gimmick, Paul. No, it's a, you're both it's wrong. an American gimmick. It's it's stuffed crust pepperoni pizza all the time. Well, yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, but you're you don't eat meat no more. Yeah, I don't eat meat. Yeah. But it'd be it'd be fake pepperoni. <laughs> it'd be tofu. Anyway, we're off topic. So that was a good I'm analogy. About to get some pizzas now. <laughs> that was a good analogy. We had pizzas on Tuesday night. We I did. Think mine was very, a very nice one. pizza. Yes, they were. Yeah. Oh, truffle pizza. Mm. Yeah, it was quite nice for it, considering it nice. come from a pub. Um, yeah, uh, doesn't it make you think again about your mortality, though, and what your like when you will be that age, like the things that you'll look back on with regret and the things that you'll look back on fondly the people that you knew it just makes you think i wish i'm not as lonely as he is but see the funny thing is right he had family he had friends he had people but it wasn't enough i don't think it no did no, you get that never, impression i never thought that was the impression he wanted his brother no he wanted to reconcile oh, yeah. with his brother yeah that's not about them not he being wasn't enough. being lonely he was just no full. i'm saying it, i'm not saying they weren't enough it's like but he wanted the full picture of his brother Yes. It made him reconsider. Him having, his brother having a stroke and he died made him reconsider it. Imagine ha- imagine leaving it till someone dies to change it. Exactly. That's why he was not doing that. But the good thing was you didn't know actually what their argument was about as well. Like, think, like, argue, people stop talking uh, many times and fam- families stop talking to each other too because of arguments. And it's always sad and it's always a shame when it happens, but sometimes there's good reason. And sometimes it's actually better for people. I think Alvin was very racist. <laughs> Why do you and say Harry that? Did, Harry Dean Stanton didn't want. <laughs> oh my god, that'd have been dark, eh? Wouldn't Imagine. it? Imagine. That would have been Imagine a dark that. reveal. <laughs> that would be a terrible. That'll, that'll be a David Lynch reveal at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like Harry Dean Stanton's. But you, you're not racist, anymore, right? <laughs> oh no, I'm still racist. Yeah. <laughs> Get back on oh your lawnmower. Oh, my God. That would have been dark, mate. That would have been... Ugh. How do you reckon he got home? <laughs> do you reckon he rode the lawnmower back? Well, in real life, his uh, son and nephew drove him home. What did he do with the lawnmower? <laughs> Kicked it in the lake. <laughs> he was like, fuck that. <laughs> I've been on that long enough. Um, How would you have liked it if that was the ending of the film? You would have ruined would everything it did. Would it be better or worse? No, it would have been worse. It would have made you feel uncomfortable. I mean, the thing that, what that makes me think of, right, is that, weirdly, is that Black Mirror episode where you're watching a guy all the way through. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Going through the trials and tribulations and it turns out he's a paedophile. Yeah. And you've been sympathising with him all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good episode, though. Very good episode. <laughs> Very uncomfortable episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that is a thing. Like, we don't know what, uh, but it doesn't Alvin matter. Alvin and it his brother. It, it doesn't matter to no. us. They reconnected is what's important. The matter. What matters is the rekindling of the yes. relationship. 
Yeah, exactly. It's and 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 just coming peace. If that's what he wanted in his in his twilight years, then let him go for it and and have it. He wasn't hurting anyone. He went breaking no laws. We follow him along on this journey. He encounters people. He teaches a few life lessons. He gets in touch with common man. He lives. He does something quite incredible at the end years of his life, mm-hmm. and the journey was worth it. The polar opposite of him, or how we see him at the beginning, just laying on the floor, not being able to do anything. Yes. While a lady outside eats pink coconut cakes. Toto. Another Twin Peaks character. She was very <laughs> Twin Peaks. And she, there's a line from that that got reused in Twin Peaks The Return, which is, what's the number for 911? There is, funny enough, another overweight woman in the first episode oh, of Twin yeah. Peaks The Return, who, when she realises the door is locked, she's like, oh, what's the number for 911? <laughs> there we Twin go. Twin Peaks, uh, yes, he always likes poking fun at the overweight women in Twin Peaks. Or I should say, overweight women are always the the butt of jokes, or, or quite ridiculous in Twin Peaks. Mm. Well, she was obsessed with her appearance, wasn't she? Yeah. The one bit that I didn't know whether I meant to love or be like, oh no, <laughs> was when his track, his lawnmower started piling down the hill. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he was clinging on, and there were like close-ups <laughs> to his eyes. But then, when it stopped and he was really upset, I was like, oh yeah. fuck, man! Yeah. See, see an old old man crying is the elements yes. in that whole scene were just like, there's a house on fire. Yeah, <laughs> there's all the people putting it out. There's all these people watching him come down the hill. I was like, is he going to smash through this f- barn or something? <laughs> like, what is the relevant? That's what it was like. What is the relevance of this whole scene right now? It's like th- there's a house on fire. There's a rel- there's and no people relevance. Watching, Paul. That's and he's the coming film. down the hill. <laughs> That's it. It's just in that moment you felt a little fear for him. He felt fear because that's it. He wasn't. He wasn't just like, oh, I'll go out and, and I'll be fine. He was scared. He yeah. Was, he put himself in a situation that scared him. He's still a, a human. He's trying to do something, but he's come up against things. And then he had the kindness of strangers in that situation. Those people who just came along and were like, oh, we'll put you up. You can you can stay here for a bit. You can do this. We'll get you into town. Or even offering to drive him. It was just a very optimistic... I could imagine if you were feeling very low, if I was feeling very low, if I was feeling very depressed... And it's like, I need a film to cheer me up a little bit. Give me a little bit of faith, yeah. Give me like a little cuddle. This is the film you that, for. That would, film would do the trick. And I would, if I was feeling very low, I would probably cry watching that. You feel the beauty mm. in the world. Yeah, it would give me a little bit of hope because that's it. it. No one in that film is a negative influence on him at all. I think the two mechanics who are trying to fleece him with loads of money. True, but then he spins it and then teaches them a lesson. Mm. And he wins, so it becomes a victory. <laughs> victory for Alvin. Yeah. Hey, a man travels across America on a lawnmower. Directed by David what's Lynch and produced by Walt Disney. I agree. Directed what's, by David Lynch. I'll yeah. just say what's not to like. Although I will say your original point about the editing is true. The cuts come very quick mm. to black. Yeah. Often. And like fade cuts to like just yes. from a scene, it's, it, it felt it, it maybe maybe it just feels like a TV like a TV episode, like an old style TV episode where it's like the fade cuts to like he's back on the road again. Mm. Well, now you know that David Lynch didn't edit it. Oh, did he didn't? And nowadays, for the most part, Lynch is all about final cut and everything. He writes, directs, edits. Mm. Always does sound, always does sound. When the credits, we were watching the credits and like David Lynch's name had disappeared and then it went sound design and it was David Lynch. We were both like, of course, because <laughs> he does <laughs> always on sound. Sound is his thing. And he did just, yeah, he used sound so well in that still. There's always like a low hum that gives off a sense of something's happening here, man. Mm. Pay pay attention. There's nothing more ominous than that, that opening scene though. Yeah, that very slow move. I know, I was waiting for something awful. Going straight, it's like going into the window. It's like, what is going on in that house? Yeah. yeah. What was your favourite line in the whole film? Or little lesson from Alvin? Um, the sticks. Sticks was good. And then she left the bundle of sticks for him. Yeah. That was nice. Sweet. She, was like, she was like, fuck my family, I'm leaving it. <laughs> She went off on her way. 
I said I like the one where he goes, I ain't scared of no Iowa cornfield. You're watching Ghostbusters, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't scared of no ghosts. <laughs> I ain't scared of no yeah, cornfields. Yeah, that was I the edit. World War Two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was nice. God, you're so my kids, nice. aren't you? It's all these people worrying it and the reasons that are holding him back. And he's like, no, I'm not letting this hold me back. I'm doing this shit. And there's a lot ben? of good, good ones in there. Oh, what I liked, I, I liked just like the line when he said about uh, the worst thing about being old is remembering being young. Mm. Because that makes because it will be tomorrow. It will. Yeah. So it's like we got to enjoy being able to do things, the freedom to do things mm. before things start failing. Small. My effective. eyes, my eyes is already failing. And what if I start lose sight? I'll remember when I had sight. Very small moment, but very effective. Yeah. I also liked when he um, said something about there's a lot of power in just sitting. Because I was like, that's Lynch. That's Lynch saying that. Mm. Because Lynch's whole thing is not about talking. It's like, let me sit and observe. He said something the other day. I can't remember if this was, I read this or if this was a video interview, but he was like, where you're sitting right now, what you can see, isn't it fascinating that you are sat there, you've chosen to sit there, and because of where you're sitting, you're getting an angle on all the things you can see around you, a unique angle from your position. And isn't it interesting that you can see that the way that looks like that from there? But if you move over slightly, it looks like something else, or you wouldn't even know it was there. And that's how he just approaches mm-hmm. all scenes, all stuff in in life. He's a very clever man, isn't he? He's a beautiful fucking spirit, man. Love that guy. Mm. And I was very, very happy to see something from him that was different. But it's still a David Lynch production. If you watched this film, it was on TV. You would never have thought it was David Lynch though until the end. There would be moments in it where you might go, "Oh, that's almost like Twin Peaks." I didn't see. Would you think it is as creepy as it was that ominous scene at the beginning if it wasn't David Lynch? Well, see, that's something we'll never know. Yeah, it would be great if you could. If only there was some way of not knowing this was David Lynch. Like mm. if he'd used like a ghost writer, a, a fake name and released this movie yeah and then years later was like oh by the way i did that yeah and everyone was like what <laughs> like imagine bambi he was like yeah yeah i did that i i animated everything i wrote the script <laughs> I, I, I animated, animated it. it all you'd be like yeah he killed that mama dear he yeah definitely of did course that. so david lynch <laughs> makes sense <laughs> yeah wonderful beautiful yeah maybe feel good and feel nice and maybe I should watch more Lifetime films if they would actually make me feel that way, but I don't think they would. That's I think they the will. thing. That's the difference is if you watch a Lifetime movie, you'd feel nothing because you'd be like, this is mindless pap. They are, they are attempting fake emotional resonance and it's just not landing. Whereas this How would you know? landed. It might so be your secret, niche that secret, you're missing out on your whole life. Them. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe I need all that Lifetime shit in my life. <laughs> what would you say is a better version of this film? I already have. Oh well, okay. It's I don't have a better version of this film. I'm trying to think of films in this version, so like back in your box, in this bracket. Because you you got to have a film that better represents an an older person's perspective on the life. Yeah. So. What's a sort? What's a, a sweet film about an older person that is a focuses on that older person rather than someone else who has an older person as a granddad or something mm. again the only one I could think of is Lucky and I think that's because you said it earlier it's, yeah. it's very it's very few and far between you get it because as you say it's like it would only go for rebelling against the world now like Harry Brown or a Clint Eastwood exactly or a- exactly that's the only way that it's allowed to be acceptable for those sorts of films to get made similar with, I don't know about Promising Young Woman but like a, a lot of like female empowerment films or films that are framed as female empowerment films are actually just females in those revenge roles because mm. like, oh we want to watch it because it's like revenge females revenge old person's revenge mm. it's like oh why don't we just have a film about women or why don't we just have a film about old people mm-hmm. there's only one other film that I can think outside of Lucky and it's about Schmidt but even that is Jack Nicholson in the lead so it's like oh, oh. watch Jack Nicholson so everyone wants to go see I watched that. that did I even have I even watched that I can't even think See that was kind of that's kind of similar because like his wife dies immediately, and then he I goes on a journey yeah. to see his daughter. I have and seen it's, 
I'm yeah, thinking of as good as it gets. That's, that's what good. I was thinking of when you said it about Smith. Yeah, that's nice. Mm. Well, Paul, I recommend you go and check out Lucky as well. See if you like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I anyway. definitely want to see it, yeah. David Lynch is in it <laughs> as well. With his tortoise. Oh, yes, I remember you telling. I remember you saying. I think oh, it was yeah. one of one of the monthly roundups. Adam mentioned it. Oh, yeah, because Adam watched it, yeah. That's mm-hmm. true. Wonderful. Anyway, that's Wonderful good. Shall we place it? Well, before we place it, shall we just have oh, yes. Jamie Russell's review of this film? Yeah, come on. Here we go. I ideally want my films to have heart and soul to them, and The Straight Story is a fine example of this. It's the linking film between Stanton's wonderful farewell performance in the film Lucky. You said it. Mm. Both feature standout performances from the two lead protagonists, who both play endearingly stubborn characters, both inspired into action following bad news. I really enjoy the road trip aspects of the film, which allows the excellent screenplay to explore themes of loneliness, guilt, and the bonds of family. This trip essentially becomes an extended pilgrimage for our main character. There are frequent flashes of Lynch throughout, particularly in the big in the beginning sections. I said this. I swear on it. I haven't even read this review. (laughs) (laughs) I promise. But it has a warmth that you would not associate with his other films. Yet I don't feel it ever becomes overly sentimental and finishes on a lovely scene of both brothers looking up to the stars together. It emotionally resonated with me even more this time as I'm so close to my brother and have not been able to see him for a long time for various reasons. Oh, and the score and cinematography is absolutely stunning as well. I hope you all enjoyed it. We did all enjoy it in some way. Very much so, Jamie. Yeah. Very, very much so. On that score, it, I forgot to say, it is Angelo Badalamenti who did the score for Twin Peaks. Oh, there you That's go. That's why it sounds like Twin It's all Peaks. very like synthy, isn't it? Like... Well, he's got that. He's got that beautiful piano, but then also he's got that sort of like folky guitar oh, plucking yeah. style, which is of, very different. The beginning, the when it's zooming on the yeah. window, I think that's the sympathy bit. But Jamie gives it a ten out of ten. There we Excellent. go. Excellent, good stuff, Jamie. And as always, our suggestions from our patrons lends towards us placing the film. So the ten out of ten would go towards our average rating. So it's very exciting. Shall we do our other? reviews first before we move on to place before the film. we do that do, do you meet miss tommy did it make you think of tommy having not seen him for a long time no <laughs> <laughs> tommy is paul's brother everyone <laughs> did you miss your sister anymore adam not really <laughs> didn't work you two are cold did you miss your brothers <laughs> no <laughs> three's a three of a pair there we go three of a pair hat trick three of a yeah <laughs> three of a pair Makes sense. That's a David Lynch film. Everyone's going, what? How can it be? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Luke Human says, this subtle Lynchian movie delivers real poignancy, beautifully juxtaposing the indomitable spirit of adventure with constraints on the human body in the autumn of its existence. This asks us to be kind and to realise that human connection is easily the most precious thing we have. Uh, as always, super fucking articulate, Luke. Mm, he is. And yes... Human connection, that's it. Like That is it, right? It's about human connection. I wonder if this resonates any more with us because we're in COVID times. Maybe. It's mm. the urge to explore. Would you be allowed to do this in lockdown? Would what, you be travel allowed to on a tra- travel lawnmower? On a lawnmower? Mm. You're outside. Are you, is there any travel restraints anymore? You're meant to stay local still, I think, aren't you? I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway... Yes, agreed. Well done. Next one here is from Trivia Sheet. She said, I have family that lives close to where this was shot. I have never seen it, but by that merit alone, it's probably a solid film. I will check it out in the meantime and report back. You should check it out, Trivia. Yeah, you should. You should. Lastly, we have Eggs Acid. They say, David's second best movie behind Mulholland Drive. That is a shout right there. It's wonderful and on Disney Plus, people should watch it. Is it on Disney Plus? It's on yeah, in America. I don't think it is. In America, yeah, in America. Because I had to rent yeah. it on Amazon. It was like one pound on so Amazon. Same. It's like 99p, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Just a quid. Yeah. yeah. One quid. Watch it. One quid. Cheap. <clears throat> well, I, I mean, it's a shame that more people couldn't have, have seen it. You know, it would be great if more people had had the chance to see that mm. film. But there you go. Let's place it. All right, everyone. So we just took a little break there. Obviously, with Jamie's 10... We've got a odd number that we wouldn't normally have. As we divide by four, we get 8.25. We round up to an 8.3. And we've got a whole host of films sitting on 8.3, including 
three that are in the top 20 that we've done on this podcast. However, we have decided that it isn't better than any of them, or those boys have, I think it is. And it sits at the bottom of the 8.3s, which is still a very fine position. So it sits just below Sound of Metal, last last week, two weeks Mm. ago episode. And look at this, it sits above Holy Motors. Wow. It knocks Holy Motors down. Wow. See, I would say Holy Holy Motors is so much better than that film. (laughs) I mean, I, I, yeah, but I wouldn't say that in that horrible negative way that you did. I, I think Holy Motors is a better film, but you frame it in such a horrid way. You little evil child. So You just feel so sorry for Alvin, don't you? I do. You are, you are like one of the Academy Award voters who went, yeah, yeah, Kevin Spacey was better, give it to him. And then Kevin what, Spacey so, turned out to be... Why do I want to give it to Holy Motors? A foreign surreal film. Well, Academy would stay well away from that film. <laughs> well, there we go. We had it. So now we've got three Lynch films. And we've got a fair spread across the board. Because we've got Mulholland Drive right at the top of uh, our ratings. And then we've got this kind of like just sitting above the middle. Not bad. And then we've got a Razorhead quite low down. So we've got a fair spread of Lynch here. Mm. So what we're saying is we don't like him to be too weird. We don't like him to be too normal. We prefer it when you blend the normal and the weird I'd and give us more Holland Drive. That's what made yeah. Twin Peaks so special. Yeah. You can't, how can I argue with this? You can't. Borat. So cheers. <laughs> Thanks once again, Jamie, for that recommendation. You've hit us, you hit us with a low ball with Burn After Reading and then you threw us a high ball there. Good lad. Paul's going to disagree with that. What's next? Anyway, now we move on to the segment, which is us telling you what the patrons, our lovely patrons, want you guys to watch and want us to watch as well. So, first of all, this this go with Jamie Russell. And he says, So, apart from my glorious rewatching of The Straight Story, I would recommend watching, rewatching Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It holds up really well, and Val Kilmer is absolutely brilliant as Gay Perry. Perhaps this and The Nice Guys would be a perfect double bill. I just can't understand why both films failed to find an audience, particularly as they are examples of original films rather than a remake, sequel, adaptations, etc. It explains perhaps why studios are so reluctant to give original material a chance in the first place. I very much agree. Nice Guys is a 9 out of 10. Nice Kiss Guys Kiss is a Bang, wicked film, man. So good. Nice I guys. don't understand why you two love this so it's much. It's such a fun film. It was fine. It was seven. <laughs> it's just like what Paul said about this film. It was like, yeah, it's fine. I had it's so much it. fun with it's that film. It's a banging film. film. Have you not seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? No, and you also bang on about that all the time. I don't bang on about that. There, there is he, you bang. He there just, is he bangs on about Val Kilmore. He's like, people need to have more Val Kilmore in films. They do. <laughs> That's true. You like Val Kilmore with them big fat kissy lips. <laughs> I do. What's wrong with his lips? They're too fat. Poor Val. Kilmore. I've never really remembered Val Kilmore in anything I've ever watched him in. Apart from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Even then, I don't really remember. It's Johnny Depp, that's all I remember. Was it Johnny Depp in there with him? No. You Who? don't even remember. It's Robert Downey Who's Jr. It? Robert Downey Jr. Even I know that. <laughs> uh, one of the Roberts. Johnny's. <laughs> one of the Roberts. Well, maybe I'll give it a whirl since you lot talk about it so much. But if it's anything like Nice Guys, it's, it's going to be like, I would yeah, honestly fine. say you'd probably... If you didn't like Nice Guys, then you'd probably hate Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I liked it. That's it, though. Yeah. That's the thing. So you probably it was like fine it. for two hours, but I forgot about it. And the only time I'm ever reminded about it is when film Twitter creams their pants over it. <clears throat> like Paddington, which too. they do. Yeah. Nice guy. Nice Guys is the kitty. It's the good one. Next one. Next up, we have Katie and Ot um, from Four Year Reference Podcast. We powered into the TV series Zero. I believe the protagonist is a teenager and there's some supernatural elements involved, but it, but it keeps it grounded with assured themes of cultural clashes and social class. Grab a snack and tuck into these tasty eight episodes. I've never heard of it. I've never series. heard of it. Well, I don't I've think I've heard of this never series. Never even had anyone else talk about it. So. Supernatural it elements mm. with cultural clashes and, on social class. And it was mm. called Zero. Yeah. That's yeah. the name of the dog in Nightmare Before Christmas. How do you like that? I don't zero. think it's a TV series about the Nightmare Before Christmas dog. That'd be great if it was. That's the twist. It's supernatural. It was a dog. Yeah, I mean, it was a ghost. Town meeting. That's my quote from that, Nightmare Before p- Christmas. Very good. <laughs> zero. I can't even find that out. 
Yeah, no, we ain't got nothing to, to offer, but if we can find it, we will try checking it out. I do have to confess, if they're listening, if they're still listening, that I tried to, to watch Snowfall and I got a couple episodes in and I was like, nah, it's not for me. See, this is the so thing to, with Snowfall. I had to stop watching it. Everybody's always like, oh, it gets really good after like three seasons. And it's like... So that's a long time to invest your time. Why am I watching it before? Why are we waiting that long for it to get good? But, oh well. Yes. That's what people say about Line of Duty as well. And I started watching Line of Duty and I was like, this is the shittest acting ever. So don't watch it then. Is that the lesson of Line of Duty? I've yeah, I just, watched stopped, it. I just stopped watching it. I didn't, I'm not watching it. Why does everyone, everyone loves that one so much? Like, I feel like because everyone loves it, I won't like it. Mm, it's, it's That's probably own. true, isn't it? It's really bad act. It's really badly acted. Well, let's, people are very easily pleased in this world. And then, lastly, we have Julio, who said the Oscars weekend made me watch Minari, The Father, and Promising Young Woman. Well, two of those made it into our Patreon mm. roundup this month. So, if you want to go check it out, or if you want to sign up to be a patron, you know what to do, and you can hear our takes on those. None of us have seen The Father though, and that's the one I'm most intrigued by because uh, dementia and Hopkins, of course. Anyway, sorry. And Promising Young Woman, almost back to back. What a glorious time. All great films, but Promising Young Woman in particular blew me away. I just loved its I don't give a fuck who I piss off attitude. Well, listen to Paul Wax Lyrical on our Mm -hmm. Patreon about it. Also, I literally just finished another round and had a hard time falling under its spell, although Mickelson's performance was fantastic. Curious to hear other takes on it. I too, Julio, watched another round and... I too had a hard time falling under Mickelson's spell at the end. I liked Mickelson all the way through. I didn't think the film is this incredible thing that everyone's talking about. It's a great concept. I don't think it played out in the most engaging way. Um, And the so-called, I don't know how to talk about it without spoiling, but the big euphoric moment that everyone seems to love I was like, what? This doesn't ring true. This wouldn't happen. Why is this happening? And why is this... This is what's going to get this thing the Oscar nomination? And the Oscar win. Anyway. Well, didn't, you didn't, Kate, didn't Katie and Oti, um like, praise this film? Was it last No, that, I think they were the same. I, I think in the last episode, they were the same. They were like, they liked it, but they, they, there was a little something that mm. held it back for them to... If I, if I, remember correctly well either way we none of us have seen the father but we will watch it at some point but we have yeah. seen minari in part and promising young woman in part and we talk about these exact films on our patreon episode if you yeah. want to go listen to it it's our monthly roundup episode www.patreon.com forward slash film busters and that is our straight story episode well done boys well done jamie thank you so much again it's always your a pleasure. recommendation. Yes. We'll have some more patron recommendations in the very near future, I believe. We will indeed. But, but before first, we do that, yes. we haven't we haven't announced this to the normal people. No, we have not. Our patrons know if they've Our listened to the episode. Know. But what's happening? We have a very oh, yeah. fun month coming up. It is the month of what month is it, Adam? The to month put of context May. into the episode. <laughs> yes. It's May. And we'll probably have to mention every episode. That it is the month of May because otherwise it wouldn't make sense any other time. <laughs> yeah, it's the month of it's, reanimation. It's not it, the month of reanimation. <laughs> well, yeah, you could I mean, obviously not the title of the film. I was going for it. You could have followed off that, but you shot it down instead. What are we watching? I'm not, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> we are watching all of the reanimator films. So you could have rolled off that like that. So we are going through the film franchise that none of us have ever seen before. We're going to do it one at a time. We're going to release an episode after every one. We've no idea what to expect. So we're going to be hitting Reanimator 1, Reanimator 2, and Reanimator 3. They're not the full titles. They've Bride, got of, silly Bride titles. of Reanimator something? Bride of Reanimator. Something so any Reanimator. Reanimator films, the month of May is going to be very special for you lot. Uh, and they'll be coming up next. Yes. Who knows what to expect? I don't know. We don't know. We're going a little it, bit back around blind because I don't really know what it's about. <laughs> no, I don't either. Do you know there's a weird connection to this episode when I said American Beauty because in that film, I'm oh, sure yeah. that Ricky Fisk, the next door neighbour, mm. has Reanimator and Kevin Spacey comes around to borrow it as code for getting drugs off him. Mm. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> <laughs>
Reanimator. So if you want to join in us heaven, and the Reanimator discussion, join us. But hang on, what have, what else have we got? In heaven, everything is fine. <laughs> Go on, Adam, you wrap it up. Do a good segue. Uh, that's it for our um, straight story episode. Um, we will see you next time um, when we will be talking about Reanimator 1. So you get that watched in and you can join along with that. Um, if you want more content in there, just find some old podcasts and listen to them. We'll, you can hear us talking shit over there. Or you can sign up to our Patreon as well and you can get even more exclusive content that you've never heard before. Unless you really are a Patreon member and you just want to re-listen to it. That was Fire. Went wonderful. It's very, very comprehensive. Wow. Ciao. Yeah. See you in the month of Reanimator. <laughs> Reanimator. Oh, that, that was unnecessary. Ew,